Okay, good day everyone. So this session will discuss about allowing our students to think historically and allowing also our students to think geographically as part of the development of or em embodying critical thinking skills that is aligned to the K-12 curriculum. Okay? So, allow me to read my uh, summary of discussions. No? Okay, so, in the article of Von uh, Haking, okay, it is just mentioned or pointed out that history don't have a single, or doesn't have rather, a single narrative, which means to say that History came from various perspectives from the experiences of the people. Teaching history challenges uh, us teachers to go beyond in dealing the facts. Hence, they should know or they should allow or we should allow rather the students to reconstruct events from the past in which they can find acknowledgement that the past is different from the present. Historical understanding is beyond or does not connote memorization. In other words, when we teach history, it's not just about the facts, about memorizing the facts. It's about dealing and how to how can we interplay or rather how we can use the facts in reconstructing what really happened from that uh, period in the past okay, or in the particular period or context. Okay? It engages the students or the teachers uh, should engage the students to recreate stories about the past using evidences. Children's historical understanding is based on uh, environment, on their environment and their experiences. It is a challenge for us teachers okay, to provide opportunities for the students to train history or to appreciate, allow our students to appreciate history beyond the facts. Peter Seychas, one of the leading scholars of thinking of rather uh, historical consciousness and historical thinking, provide six concepts in which how students can learn history. The first one is historical significance. Historical significance is that it is a, a particular concept in which what should be discussed and how important that particular event that is being discussed. No? It can determine a long-term impact okay, of an event or idea of a person. What makes an event so important that the succeeding generations would consider discussing these events? Most likely, when we talk about of historical significance, it talks about why do we consider this particular event very important in our lives or if not, based on the uh, generations. No? Kung ano yung nagiging kahalagan, bakit nga ba pinag-uusapan, bakit ito ay pinagtutuon ng pansin, sino nga ba ang mga taong ito, at bakit mahalaga silang pinag-aaralan sa kasaysayan. Okay, so, I have this particular uh, good friend of mine that this uh, that is research study talks about historical significance. The research also had shown that uh, there are factors that we need to consider how, how can students learn historical significance, not just inside the classroom or within the teacher, but also the outside experience. Now, may mga batayan kasi, uh, may mga batayan no, kung bakit nagiging mahalaga ang mga pangyayari sa nakaraan. Kaya ito'y laging sinasama sa mga textbook ng mga mag-aaral. Halimbawa, uh, bakit nga ba't nga sinasabi natin na mahalagan, binabalik-balikan natin ang, ang mga nagiging pang-abuso nung panahon ng martial law? Bakit kailangan pinag-uusapan ang martial law kahit ilang dekada na itong natapos? O kaya naman, bakit nga ba pinag-uusapan o ano nga ba ang kahalagahan ng mga comfort women sa ating kasaysayan? So, other things that we need to consider to teach the students is that why independent nations during the American period important to the context of the Filipino and at the, in that particular context as well. Can we consider the death of Andres Bonifacio as a plot twist or highlight an importance of the struggle towards independence? Bakit na, nga ba nagiging mahalaga ang, pagtat, ang naging pagtatalo nila Andres Bonifacio at ni Emilio Aguinaldo sa isang konteksto. Okay? Next is evidence and interpretation. So, it is very important that we allow our students to use evidences 
at the same time to appreciate the things that happened from the fa- from the past rather so how can we claim that's the question how can we claim the established fact as a fact when we teach history we do not allow our students to learn history as is as if it is a grand uh, narrative of events na parang isang it's a single story na nandun na lahat ng mga nangyari no with the use of evidence okay it solidifies a student's conception and understanding about the past it also uh remove no various misconceptions about various events that happens from the past okay kumbaga uh, binibigang balanse ng paggamit ng ebidensya ang mga pananaw ng bata tungkol sa mga bagay sa nangyari sa nakaraan. The use of primary and secondary source at all forms is important for the teacher to equip the student's thinking skills. Hence, it, allow our te- it allows history learning for children to become more personal and in nature to connect their personal experience to the context of that time. For example, evidence and interpretation would like to tell us um, in the personal f- sense, no? Na, um, bakit nga ba, o kaya naman may nakita kayong uh, mga lumang textbook ninyo or lumang mga litrato ninyo, lumang family pictures ninyo, okay? At nakita mo yung development ng lugar na yun, kung saan, uh, kung saan ka tumira, o kaya naman yung development ng family ninyo batay sa mga larawan na ito. There are studies abroad in which uh, uh, historians, or if not uh, experts in history education, had pointed out the importance of the use of evidence and interpretation. Okay, I have this also classmate of mine in the graduate school that discusses now, or what she is doing right now is the is with the help of evidences or the primary sources it uh, it practices now the students interpretation skills so yun yung mga nagiging trend ngayon sa pag uh, ano uh, sa mga pag-aaral sa social studies no itong classmate ko naman na ito what she did is to provide the primary sources and provide basic questions for interpretation sa estudyante what should we consider here is that when we use basic questions of five W's, that's who, what, where, when, why, and how, we should also equip well with the use of the sources. Kung baga, uh, hindi mo laging mag analyze ka na, na, na bumagsak na sa analysis or interpretation yung mga discussion ng bata, pero paano mo nagagamit yung evidence na yun ng mabuti? Interpretation and evidence is important in reconstructing past event. Okay. Halimbawa, yung tulad na sinasabi ko sa inyo sa readings in Philippine history before. Uh, merong isang nanood ng concert ni Lady Gaga. Okay? Uh, may isang hindi nanood ng concert ni Lady Gaga. So, sino doon na mas paniniwalaan mo? Well, of course, ang paniniwalaan mo doon, yung nanood ng concert ni Lady Gaga, kasi siya yung mismo nagiging evidence. And the way na, na, na uh, ginawa ni Lady Gaga yung concert is that through the primary source, dun na natin i-interpret kung ano nga ba yung nangyari dun sa concert ni Lady Gaga. Okay? Continuity and change is also very important in discussing the uh, historical thinking for students. Life experience, as pointed out in the article, can help young students okay, to appreciate the natural cause of change. Age is also a contributory factor in knowing changes. This includes technology, social values or customs being changed from one generation to another. It is also very important that students should know the use of concepts about time, such as the past, the present, yesterday, long ago, a moment ago, decades, years, or centuries. Okay? It is very also evident that when we teach students uh, continuity and change, it is very personal by nature. For example, uh, what are the things that you are doing o ano nga ba yung mga pinagkakaabalahan ninyo o yung mga ginagawa ninyo nung sampung taon pa lang kayo? O kaya naman, ano yung mga naging favorite na laruan ninyo o kaya mga o paano kaya yung itsura mo ano kaya naging itsura mo 10 years ago at yung sa kasalukuyan? 
O kung titignan mo naman, ito yung dati mong skwelahan, 10 years ago, tapos 15 years uh, 15 years had passed, ito na siya ngayon. So, doon makikita mo yung pagbabago at pagpapatuloy nung paaralag mo. Okay? Tulad din discuss ko sa inyo sa RPH, uh, ang classroom na ginagamit natin sa skwelahan, okay? ang mga upuan doon na kung saan ang mga sudyante ay may mga naisulat ng mga kwento nila or struggle sila habang nagtut- nagtuturo si teacher, these are examples of continuity and change. Kasi nakikita mo yung daloy, yung kwento ng mga taong yun, ng mga panahon na yun. So, kung sampung taon yung upuan na yun, most likely, nakikita mo yung development ng classroom na yun at yung mga taong gumamit ng classroom na yun. Sequencing is important in developing students' concept of continuity and change. Example, allow your students to experience a personal timeline that discusses the years as they grow up. Using pictures, this is, these are according to the studies of uh, Professor Barton also, one of the leading founders or one of the leading historical uh, history education professors, that using pictures okay, uh, provides students a concept of chronology, pagkakasunod-sunod. Yan. According to Seishas, Concepts that students should also understand, okay? Continuity and change should also understand that changes is a process in which varying process or patterns or progress decline. Also, we need to pre- uh, we need to understand the concept of periodization. Kaya diba sa Philippine history, meron tayong tinatawag na pre-Spanish era, uh, the Spanish colonization, the American colonization, the Japanese period, and then the Third Republic, and so forth. This is an example of periodization. Ito yung dapat na matutunan natin sa mga bata. Naturally, dapat itong lumalabas. Kasi sa ngayon sa aklat, no? Sa aklat ni uh, Sam Weinberg, historical thinking is a natural. So, how can we now challenge our students to make an ad? How can we make our students not uh, allow historical thinking as a natural process? So, babalikan natin din yung discussion last time about the habits of the mind. By activating our critical thinking, we allow also invite our students to think historically. Causes and consequences allow our students to ask, why do events happen and what are the impacts of these events? No, This includes that the changes to uh, the various multiple causes and results as its consequences. There are things that we need to consider to allow our students appreciate history as causality, that is, cause and effect or consequences. First, the historical actors. Historical actors should consider now the person, okay, uh, the event, or rather the place, or the object that causes that particular event to happen. Okay. A graphic web organizer, as provided in the reading, enables our students to stretch the cause and effect of the particular historical event. Example, uh, para mas malinaw sa atin. In the 1896 revolution, what were the causes? Or rather, sab- uh, sige, ibahin natin. Um, how did, or paano natuklasan ang katipunan, no? At ano ang naging sumunod na uh, ano yung naging consequences ng pagkakatuklas sa katipunan movement? So, these are the questions that you need to consider in asking your students or to think historically. With the use of primary source or secondary source, okay? They can e- they can e- enable, no? They will enable able their their thinking skills that Ah, this is can this can be the cause of, for example, uh, the 1896 revolution, o kaya naman uh, in the Cavite mutiny. What causes of the Cavite mutiny? Okay, so yon. Last is historical, or the second to the last is historical perspective. Historical perspective refers to the uh, process of how can we better understand the people of the past. In the United Kingdom and some parts of the United States and even in Australia, historical perspective refers to historical empathy. That is putting yourself in the shoe of a person from the past. Yours truly uh, had made a study about historical empathy of the people who, who had experienced 
the Second World War. Okay? So, historical perspective taking, that is, refers to the difference from of the current worldview and those of the early periods of history. Hence, the students should, okay, should recognize that the past is different from today to avoid presentism. In other words, when we talk about of historical perspective, you are looking at the proper context. Why is it that uh, the people during the time of the Holocaust had experienced, or rather the Jews during the time of the Holocaust, had experienced much no, of prejudice and discrimination? Okay? If we will try to situate it in the Philippine context, uh, naging makatarungan ba ang pagpapatupad ng batas militar sa mga tao? Okay? O kaya naman, eh, tignan natin yung dalawang versyon ng Cavite Mutiny. Meron ang version ng mga Kastila at version ng mga Pilipino. Sa version ng mga Kastila, ito yung kinikwento nila tungkol sa Cavite Mutiny at ito naman yung version ng mga Pilipino. Now, pag, pag nakita natin tong dalawang historical perspectives nito ng mga tao mula doon sa panahon na yon, malalaman natin o makakonstruct natin na ay ito pala ang nangyari ng Cavite Mutiny. This really happened because of the following factors or the contributory factors. So, we always consider the context. Hindi tayo pwedeng magsabi lagi na uh, gagamit na, gagamitin natin yung present context para masituate yun nangyari sa nakaraan. Always remember this, my dear students, the past is different from today's world view. Kasi, meron ba, meron bang Twitter nung nakaraan, nung, nung, nung panahon ng mga uh, ng mga Kastila? Iba, wala. Uh, sa atin, sa konteksto ng panahon natin, mabilis kumalat ang impormasyon dahil na rin, nalbawa, sa social media, sa Facebook, sa Instagram, sa email, sa social networks. Pero before, kung tutusuriin natin itong historical perspective na to at context, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na uh, kung may Twitter lang, itong sila Aguinaldo, o kaya naman itong sila Bonifacio, at nalaman na madidiskubre na yung katipunan, most likely makakapag-second preparation pa sila. Remember, the past is different. That particular portion is different from today's context. At wala pa talagang konsepto ng internet connection ng panahon na iyon. Kaya ano nagiging konteksto nung para kumalat ang balita? Di ba pag sa salindila, okay? o kaya, uh, salinlaway rather, o kaya naman, eh pag-kwento, chismis, no? Pag-ubuo ng mga kwento-kwento. So, yun yung isang paraan na nakikita natin na iba yung panahon na yon at saka yung panahon ngayon. Ang nagiging problema sa mga mag-aaral natin, ginagamit nila ang konteksto ng kasalukuyan para mabigyang uh, pananaw yung mga nangyari sa nakaraan. Tatandaan natin, pag tinuruan natin ng mga bata, when we teach our students, we always use context. Hindi pwede lagi na uh, nagpapadala tayo lagi sa mga nakikita natin sa paligid ngayon at i-relate natin siya sa nakaraan without evaluating or properly acknowledging the context. Okay? So we infer on the we allow our students to infer on the context of the historical figures on how they felt that time. Hence the use of evidence is important in uncovering students historical perspective and of course historical empathy. The last one that uh, Seishas had been discussed no in the article by Hiking would be the ethical dimension. It challenges our students to ask questions how history help us to live with the present. Students can give his or her ethical judgment based on the context and evidence available to them. Hence, it gives the students an, an informed judgment about the context of the past and recognizes that there are limitations happened in the past. So, for example, maybe we can ask our students about uh, how did the martial law made an impact or rather the people power revolution made an impact to our present-day context or situation as a Filipino in, okay naman, um, what is the impact of the people power revolution in, uh, in our context of developing the Filipino identity? Hence, uh, 
O kaya, uh, hence or otherwise, uh, we can ask our students of the impact of the human rights history during the time during the time of uh, martial law. So, how can we uh, assess or evaluate the impact of human rights violation during the time of martial law? Or if not, how can we now evaluate or assess the impact of human rights violation in the time of your president today? So, this is how we should look at ethical dimensions. We should consider evidences okay, and proper contextualization. Okay, so that's about the discussion of Van Haking about teaching elementary students to think historically. In the article of Young, Andrew Young, it just talks about that geography is more than about coloring maps. It's more than about memorizing uh, the capital or if not memorizing the countries or if not the regions. Okay? Geography is more than information about the world. It is being tapped with skills. It uses various themes in geography, location, place, human environment, movement, and region. I hope the reporter had will discuss these particular themes. But more likely, in supplying or giving supplementary to the discussion of thinking is uh, geographically, in the article of Baha Babahani and Case in the Anthology of Social Studies, they had pointed out that effective geography instruction is allowing geography students or allowing our students to problematize geography. So we now uh, consider geography as part of developing students' critical inquiry. We allow our students to make reasoned judgments about the justifiable conclusions or interpretations from the materials provided to them. Hence, maps are very important or the use of different types of maps, locations, places, and even photos, change uh, landscapes, are very important in inviting the students to develop critical inquiry skills in geography. First is geographic importance. It answers the question or it caters questions like this. What do we need to consider for a place to be significant in various aspects? Economic, environment. Di ba pagkaganyan ang tanong natin sa mga bata, iniisip ng natin, we are inviting our students to think na, ay, oh, nga no, what's the essence of placing uh, a mall within the mountain? Okay? Ano, bakit nga ba... Um, nilagay yung uh, sabi natin yung palengke sa labas ng antipolo instead na nandun siya sa dating yung lugar sa sentral di ba? these are things that we need to consider in in discussing the geographic importance it is also very important that students would also use evidence and interpretation it concerns with the reliability and validation of various primary source or primary le learning materials such as maps surveys, the uh, GIS, no? uh, aerial photos, satellite images. Uh, the best example is that can, we can allow our students to invite geographic thinking by presenting two pictures of the Arctic, uh, Arctic Circle, the one from the 1970s and one of today. And then we, try, we can now ask our students to assess the impact or the, maybe the impact of global warming, no? in the, uh, in the uh, Arctic region. So, nakukuha niyo yung idea, uh, kapag, alimbawa, ito yung mapa ng 1970s, or yung, alimbawa, this is the map of, uh, this is the map of, uh, saglit lang, uh, this is the map of, for example, uh, this is the map of the Arctic Ocean, or the Arctic Circle in the 1970s, and then, ito na lang siya, sa kasalukuyan. So, ano nga ba yung maaring maging epekto ng climate change or global warming no, sa Arctic Circle? Okay? Constancy and change. So, ito yung pagbabago, no? Uh, akala natin sa history class lang ginagawa to, pero sa geography ganun din. Halimbawa, um, 10 years ago, dun sa subdivision ninyo, konti lang ang bahay. Then, 10 years after or 15 years after, nakita nyo meron ng uh, mini store. 
Okay? In other words, we try to learn from the patterns and distributions of geographic phenomena of time and space. Okay? Pag sinabing time and space, ito yung mga location, yung mga lugar, o kaya naman yung pagkakataon na kung saan naglalagay ng mga bagong structures. Looking at these changes happen in the place throughout time and age. Uh, for example, yung simbahan ng Antipolo. Okay? O kaya naman yung, yung dating Victory Pasalubong Center and Victory Mall, di ba dati siyang uh, nandoon lahat ng mga uh, kumaga parang uh, isa siyang lugar ng uh, bentahan talaga ng Suman, Kasoy, di ba? Bago na buo yung Victory Mall. Yan. So, another things that we need to consider or example here is that based on the immigration trends, develop a population profile of Canada by 2050 as being lifted from the article. So, those are the examples of constancy and change. Interactions would include now, how do human environmental factors influence each other? For example, if Antipolo City is part of the NCR, what might or how might its social and economic development might be different? O kaya naman, Um, halimbawa, sabihin natin na kung, uh, kung ang probinsya ng Rizal, kasama pa yung Pasig sa probinsya ng Rizal, paano kaya yung pag-unlad ng uh, Pasig no? sa probinsya ng Rizal? Ganun lang yon Parang uh, we see the movement. Pag sinabi kasi interaction in geography, ito yung paggalaw ng mga tao mula sa isang lugar o patungo sa ibang lugar. Okay? Uh, interactions within the environment, how the person or how the humans depend on the environment, modify and adapt to its environment. Yeah. So, kung halimbawa naman, um, ano kaya sa tingin ninyo magiging impact kapag ka, uh, ang dami ng, yung impact ng maraming malls dito sa Antipolo? That's an example of an interaction in geography. Hence, uh, in interaction, we allow our students to influ- uh, to be an influential figure to shape their surroundings. So, geographic perspective taking is making sense of the place. Okay? So, ito yung sinasabi natin na what can we learn from these locations? Halimbawa, uh, gumamit tayo ng mapa. Okay? Mapa ng Antipolo. Uh, kung ilalagay natin ang palengke sa labas ng Antipolo, Okay. Ano kaya ang maaaring maging impact nito sa mga tao na nandun sa mismo sa mismong bayan o sa mismong nasa lungsod? O yung mga mismong nagtitinda doon sa sentral? Okay? Kung nilipat mo yung kanilang kabuhayan doon sa may katapat na ng Robinsons ngayon. That's an example of geographic perspective taking because uh, we give sense to the living place. Uh, to the people living in the place. No? So, Bakit nga ba ang dami ng mga naglalaki ang subdivision dito sa Antipolo after nung uh, 10 years ago, wala naman masyadong maraming subdivision dito sa Antipolo? Those are examples of geographic perspective taking. Okay? Uh, ge- geographic value judgment is how we assess now geography, such as what would be the most effective or responsible way in combating the rising sea level in the Pacific Island Nation. Okay. Doon pa lang parang you are now weighing no uh, the impact of the climate change or the global warming. However, ang iniisip mo naman is uh, ano kaya yung magiging paraan mo if you are in the place of a particular scientist uh, scientist or if not an expert, anong pwede mong magawing policy para at least mabawasan yung impact ng pagtaas ng tubig sa uh, sa mga isla no sa mga lugar na pwedeng lumubog no dahil sa uh, climate uh, sa global warming or sa rising sea levels. So, various lenses, so various geographic concerns that includes now economic, environment, cultural, political, and ethical. In other words, we are making a sense of the place. Example, what is the standard of living in this area? Okay, so ano kaya ang impact kapag ka nabago itong lugar na ito? Pag pinatayuan natin ng mga iba't iba mga ginawa natin urbanize yung area na ito or itong province na ito. You know? we, there is an activity here that is uh, imaging a sense or making a sense of the place. You need to consider the following questions. First, 
What is the standard of living of this area? What is the quality of this area? What is the basis of their local economy? What is the terrain? What is the climate? How connected is this place to the rest of the country or of the region? What types of activities people typically engage in a daily basis? And what is the importance of the relationship of the environment to personal life? So, I think that's about it, no? About thinking historically and thinking geographically to the students. Ang takeaway natin dito, or the takeaway of our discussion is that uh, when we allow our students to think or to develop their critical thinking or work their habits of mind, no? they are starting to question everything about their surrounding and how can they create now policies or procedures or they can create uh, studies or create their own thoughts no? about these things that is happening around them. So historically, iniisip natin how, kay they, how they can reconstruct the past based on evidences. Pag sinabi natin geographically is how can they make an impact to their surrounding. Okay? So I think that's it. So next time that we will meet, uh, we will focus on um, might as well the use of uh, other materials or learning materials in social studies. I will provide a PowerPoint presentation about what are the things or the materials, learning materials that you can use in teaching elementary social studies aside from the mandated textbooks given to us by DepEd. Always remember this, that teaching social studies should vary from one point to another. We limit ourselves in you. Uh, we don't limit ourselves in using materials, okay? Hence, we also limit ourselves at one point in using the textbook as the Bible of everything that we that uh, we need to learn. So, dapat yun yung gawin natin sa mga students natin. We encourage our students to use evidences, to use sources. That's about uh, another PowerPoint presentation that will be discussed. So, thank you and uh, I hope you had learned something from this session.